Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do today, so we'll kind of just make it up as we go along. A um, little update, the pod is supposed to be here tomorrow, so that's good news. I also found out that apparently they expedited the other two pods more than I thought they were gonna do. My original understanding was that they were gonna push the uh, delivery date of the pod that's arriving tomorrow from Tuesday to tomorrow, but the other two would arrive a couple of days afterwards. I actually went and logged in on the website uh, uh, today and looked, looked it up and it turns out the other two pods actually arrived in Texas a couple days ago. So uh, somehow they got them pushed to the top of the list and they're already in Texas. I actually kind of wish I'd found this out earlier yesterday because then I could have called them and said, hey, you know, have those down. I want to go into them and I could have gone over there today and dealt with it. But whatever, they're here now. So that's supposedly a good thing. Uh, I do, like I said, I need to get into one of them because my birth certificate and social security card are in those. And it's really hard to go much further in, in Texas right now until I get those two pieces of documentation. So on yesterday's live stream, I kind of mentioned, I think, that I'm a bit of a fan of geology. Uh, not really the low-level stuff like the difference between igneous and sedimentary rocks and stuff like that, but a more of a large-scale level, like, you know, earthquakes and volcanoes and that kind of stuff. Because I lived in California, a place that's so seismically active, I made it a point to kind of check in on earthquake activity in the area on like a daily basis. And one of my favorite uh, websites was uh, the USGS website. You can just Google that if you're ever interested. I was especially interested about anything that was going on around my house because, you know, it's, it's good to pay attention to what's going on around you. I just checked in on the website uh, recently and saw this. This is a weird little thing going on here. There's a strange little earthquake cluster going on in Fontana right now. And it's especially interesting to me because of how close it is to where I used to live. See, this is the earthquake cluster here. I used to live over here in Placentia. So that's like 15 miles away from my house. What's even a little bit more scary is that this little earthquake cluster is about 10 or 12 miles from the San Andreas Fault. That's what this red line is here. So, you know, that fault doesn't go straight down into the ground. It kind of goes down sometimes at an angle. So this may be activity on the San Andreas Fault right now. I don't know. Um, I'll admit I'm not an expert. There are several smaller faults in the area, as you can see. But usually when you get this level of earthquakes in this short of a time, in this small of an area, it's usually, it's usually triggered because there's like a bigger earthquake that started and these are like aftershocks. It's really unusual to uh, see this many earthquakes in this small of an area over this short of a period of time, uh, especially that close to such an interesting fault like San Andreas. So, like I said, I don't know what that means, but the truth is a few years ago, there was another earthquake cluster like this down around uh, the Salton Sea. And that was getting the attention of geologists. There were news stories about that. It really turned into be nothing, but they were speculating at the time that that could indicate that there was maybe slippage or, or something going on on the San Andreas Fault because of its proximity to the, uh, to the cluster. So... It's odd to me that nobody is really talking about this one. But wouldn't it be ironic if I moved out of the house and then the big one hit? Ooh. So I've seen a lot of comments on some of my videos talking about bite and nibble. And I've noticed that there's maybe a couple misconceptions about spellings of the name and what the names specifically are. So I want to just kind of go through this again. I talked to you, talked to you about the origins of these two guys uh, a number a while back on one of my vlogs, but but I think we'll maybe go a little bit more into detail on it here this time. You gonna go hide now? Is that what you're gonna do? Well, there's one and a half caps. The other one's in there, I swear. 
anyway, these guys kind of came into my life uh, about 12 years ago. Um, the first time I'd ever seen them, uh, my parents and I had just come back from celebrating my mother's birthday, and we were going to just kind of hang out at my house for a little while. And as I walked in the front gate, I saw something moving out of the corner of my eye over the planter, kind of over by the house next to me. Didn't really register what it was, and I didn't, and since I was there to deal with my, you know, to entertain my mother, I didn't really look that much into it. But the next day, I was out in the backyard, and I saw Bite looking at me. He was standing up on the, uh, he was up on one of the planters, and I saw that little face looking at me. He was five weeks old, and I went up to him, and he immediately jumped into the gap between the planter and the house next to me. When I looked down inside of that gap, I noticed there were actually two of them down there. Um, I tried to reach for them, and Bite tried to bite me, and that was how he got his name. So I went out in the garage and got some gloves, just so I could protect my hands, and went and got a cat carrier, and uh, reached down there, grabbed him. He, he took a chomp out of the gloves, but couldn't get to me, and I got him into the cat carrier, and then I was able to catch his sister also, put her into the cat carrier, and I transported them into the house. I didn't really know what to do with them. I knew they were really young, and I didn't know how young. So first thing I did is I went to the vet, you know, brought them to a vet. Unfortunately, this was a Sunday, so I had to go like find a 24 hour a day emergency vet that was always open. Fortunately, there was one close by. I brought them over. The vet identified that they were probably about five weeks old. And my concern is, okay, I know it's usually about eight weeks for weaning. You know, what do I have to do to keep these guys alive? And, he said, and the doctor said, we can probably just feed them uh, soft cat food and they'll probably be fine on that at this stage in their life. And so I adopted them and they became my, my buddies here. Now they were both feral at the time I got them. Bite uh, mellowed out a little bit and he's kind of turned into the world's biggest lap cat. Nibble, on the other hand, never did that. Now, the, the interesting thing is, like I said, I didn't, I'm, while I named him Bite, I'm also kind of a computer nerd, so I spelled it B Y T E, like the computer bite. And then, of course, I needed a name for her, and in the computer world, half of a bite is a nibble. So she became Nibble. Thanks for putting on the great show, guys. Knew I could count on you. All right, sorry for nerding out a little bit on the earthquake stuff, but I hope I made it up to you with the cat stuff. Uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.